Dying in Minecraft is way too easy, but thankfully we have the Totems of Undying. In the last video, I used all my totems but one. If only there was a way to easily get totems without having to manually do anything. To solve my totem issue, we will be building a fully automatic raid farm. These things are pretty wild, and the design I'm using is by enx 4 so if you want to get the schematic or anything like that, I'll link his video. But we can't build this masterpiece of a farm without two things first. First, we need an elytra, and this is going to be extremely dangerous because even with a totem, we can fall into the void and die. The second thing we need is an iron farm, and this shouldn't be too hard since I have so many villagers already. We last left off just after exiting the end, but on day 37 it was time to gear back up and head right back into the end. I wanted to use some of the levels I got, so I enchanted a new sword. And after that, I went back to collecting sticks to trade for some arrows to help me snipe the baddies in the end. But don't worry, at the end of this video, I'll never have to trade sticks ever, ever again. Once I got some food, I was ready to go back to the end to explore the outer islands and find my wings. The run to the portal took all day and all night, and when we finally got to the portal to the outer islands, it was already day 38. Day 38 was the first day of of our end island adventures and let me tell you it took quite a while to find an end boat for those who don't know an end city boat is where you get the elytra or wings whatever you want to call it upon teleporting in i immediately spotted an end city but unfortunately it didn't have the boat i completely forgot i could get some very useful shulker boxes from these cities so i made the decision to raid every city i came across even if it didn't have a boat the first one didn't have much but i was able to get one of those special advancements I was satisfied with my stay at the micro city and decided to go find some more. Sadly, I didn't find any more cities and the day counter went to the next day. But on day 39, I think, it's hard to tell what day we're on when everything is just darkness and there's no day night cycle. But anyway, we found a massive city with a boat. Now the challenge was getting to the boat because it's not attached to anything and it's at the top of the city. Along my way though, I made sure to collect as many shulker shells as possible so we could have those cool boxes when we get back. My strategy for going up was to get hit by the shulkers so that they would make me feel as light as a feather and float my blocky cheeks up to the top of the city. The chest I found actually had some good stuff in them, so I made sure to loot all the chests before hitting up the ship. These little box guides are terrible guards, and whoever put them here needs to rethink their security system. Anyway, after clapping the shulker who was in front of my wings, I was able to get the legendary elytra, and I also got some bonus loot. The first tragedy of this video happened when I went to go get the dragon's head from the front of the boat. I mined the stinking thing, and then it said, bye bye, I'ma jump off and die. And guys, listen to me. There are support groups for this kind of stuff. Don't be like the dragon head. Anyway, let me let you in on a little tip for when you're raiding these end cities. Once you get your first wings, make sure you brought some firework rockets with you because you can use these rockets to help you get back to the normal world really fast. It's almost like the end was designed to be discovered while wearing these wings. Anyway, after a short flight back to the mini portal, don't worry guys, size doesn't matter as long as it does the job. We got back to the main island and teleported home. Thankfully, all my cats survived me being gone and I took a cleep so big your mom would have looked small. Day 41 was an in-between day where I did small tasks like enchanting some crazy booties and then I was like, I need mending so I don't lose my cracked gear. And if anyone has ever had to cycle trades on a librarian villager, you know how painful it can be, you know, to sit there and break the lectern over and over and over again. But thankfully, I had the video luck and I got it on the fourth attempt. Do you remember when I said that I was done chopping trees? Yeah, well, I lied because I need to get mending for my wings so they don't break like a fragile white boy whenever he goes out in the sun with all the trading done i had my mending book and put it on my wings and gave it a wonderful name if anyone can tell me what restaurant the name of my wings is from, I will literally pin that comment. Here's a hint, the restaurant serves wings. Since we were able to get an elytra with mending, that means part one of our plan is complete, and now onto part two, which is the iron farm. This iron farm will have to be built from a kind of generic iron farm that I've seen all over the place, so I don't really know who to credit it, but it will be a sort of small village with three villagers that see a zombie, and when they see it, they panic, and they spawn an iron golem, and then we kill that iron golem using lava and we funnel all the drops into a chest and we get iron and now with that in mind i kidnapped three of the most useless villagers and took them away down the river moving these guys is pretty slow so it took like all day to move them to the first spot which turned out to be too close to the village and i didn't want to deal with this today so i went to sleep i mean cleep
You know what they say, leave your problems for the future version of yourself to figure out, and that's exactly what I did yesterday. So on day 43, we moved all the villagers to a secure location for the iron farm. I made sure to give them beds and workstations so they could be productive members of society. These outcasts will love the rest of their lives here alone, trapped to be bait for my iron needs. Once I was done making sure they were safe, I flew back and made some bread for the other village to repopulate it, since it just lost three members. But it was now time to start gathering mats for the iron farm, and I wanted a portable storage box, so I craft up a shulker box and dyed it white. I spent the rest of this day gathering materials for this iron farm, and compared to the raid farm later on, this is nothing. Day 44 was the first day I started constructing the farm, because in the previous day we had collected all the materials. The design I am using is one I have seen all over the place, so I'm not really sure who to credit for it, but if you guys know, just let me know and I'll add their link to the description. But the basic idea is we flatten an area large enough around a center building so no iron golems can spawn except for in our killing chamber. So the first step was to flatten the land using dirt and then use my shovel on this dirt so it would become unspawnable. Unspawnable, is that even a word? Eh, I don't really know and I don't really care because that's where day 44 ended. Now day 45 was where we actually started building the farm. I used netherrack because it was very easy to gather and once the base layer was in place I added the glass and then the lava and then the water in the front. Now you're probably wondering how are we going to get the villagers into the farm? And I will answer that after you subscribe so we can hit 2k, but only if you really enjoy the video. But anyway, back to the villagers, and we use their desire to be employed to bait them into the holding cell. This really speaks wonders to the real world, because so many people will be baited into doing jobs they hate just to survive, and man, I really hope that's that's never me. That would, that would actually kind of suck. Anyway, I got all three villagers in the farm, and now I just needed a zombie so they would get jump scared and spawn the golems. I've always thought you needed a name tag, but apparently you can use a bow and trap a zombie in there and they won't despawn. And now with the zombie in place, I cleaned up the mess I made and witnessed the farm working, so I flew back to the home base and took a well-deserved cleep. Day 46 was the beginning of the end game, but oh boy, let me tell you, this was nowhere near the end of this raid farm journey. This was also the day I decided I was allowed to use schematics in my world. The reason I justified this was it would save a lot of time so I could make more videos for you guys, and I wouldn't have to spend so much time looking back and forth copying someone's design. And like I said in the intro, I used Ian XO4's design, so all credit for this farm goes to him. The first thing we need to do for this farm, though, is find a location. It needs to be built in an ocean biome at least six chunks away from land. And I was a little worried that the closeness to the village would be a problem, but I never thought about it again after this day. I found the exact spot in the chunk the schematic needed to be, and don't worry, these are just ghost blocks and not actually placed into my world. It's kind of like instructions for a Lego set if you've ever done one of those. The corner torch needed to be in an exact spot, so I lined everything up and went back to land to look at the material list. This is another massive perk of using this schematic. It has a material list. It shows me how much of each item I need, and if I have it in my inventory, it turns green, and if the items are in a shulker box in my inventory, it also turns green. So it's like an in-game checklist, so I don't have to keep checking back and forth from another monitor or another tab. But after all this planning and placing, I decided it was cleap time so we could be well rested for tomorrow's material gathering. Day 47 through 53 was all spent on gathering materials and wow, I spent a lot of time doing this. I just added some highlights here to show you guys the amount of items I had to gather, but it wasn't easy and unfortunately we didn't do anything fun for the 50th day anniversary of the world. I don't think I've ever stated my goal for this series, but our goal is to make it to 100 days without even dying, of course, and once that happens we will have some sort of fun thing to do on day 100. I haven't decided what it is exactly, but I'll think of something. But it looks like all the materials are gathered, so it's time to build, and I'll shut up for once and let you guys enjoy the time-lapse build.
Well, that build went well. I had to go to the nether once and I think it shows in the time lapse. Sorry about that. But day 56 was the day we finished this farm. And the last thing we needed was five villagers and the five pods on the different sides. The plan was to drop them down from the top to each of the pods because I had a water elevator already in place. But I uh, was goofing around too much and we saved that for the next day. Day 57, we put the water in the first chamber or so I thought I did. And then we used the kelp trick to make the entire water column into source blocks. This trick is very useful and I really recommend it but for those of you who don't know what the trick is if you plant a kelp line up a water tunnel it will turn all of the water blocks into source blocks and then the soul sand will act as a bubble elevator to help you move stuff upwards but uh, anyway after this was set up I went and got a wonderful villager to put into the bottom most pod let's watch this villager go into their safe pod all nice and safe uh oh oh wait he missed well let's go get another one uh oh he he missed too Maybe we'll have better luck tomorrow. I started the day by watching the third villager fall to his death and I was like, oh my goodness, this isn't working. But then I realized why. The water had been missing this entire time. I guess when I turned the elevator on, it updated the piston, which removed the water source? Oh uh, well, time to get another villager. But this time, it worked. Oh yeah, we got this now. It took me 20 minutes to get all the other villagers in, but we finally did it and after all this chaos, I fixed up the farm to get ready to test it the next day. Day 60 started out with me heading out to get that bad omen of again so we could start this raid farm up. I did forget one thing which was the raid captain holding cell so we could start a raid whenever we want but I'll get back to that later. But I arrived to the outpost and spent the entire day trying to find a captain or whatever they're called. As the sun was setting we did find him and we killed him and we got the bad omen effect and we flew back in the dark and I realized that it's best to enter the farm from the bottom and head straight for that killing chamber. So I started swinging to get the timing down because if you you know how the swords work if you hit an area of effect around you example like on the armor stand it does damage to all the the mobs and stuff around you so the strategy was to get the raid mobs grouped up lowered health and then kill them now this was a good plan until out of nowhere i got hit for like three hearts by a vex these guys suck so much and they come back later on with a vengeance as i was trying to run i popped my last totem and i became very very vulnerable to these little guys thankfully this time i was able to get away but next time i might not be so lucky I flew away to make them despawn and went back to check if I got any totems. Unfortunately, we did not. And this day was very scary and ended with me rethinking what I could do to prevent the vexes. Day 61 was spent entirely just running around brainstorming options. Like, I knew I needed a better sword, but could I get one? It needed to be enchanted with sweeping edge and sharpness so I could make sure it was hitting all the vexes or like the guys that spawn them. I can't have knockback or fire aspect because those enchantments destroy the armor stands. Hmm. Day 62, I spent at the iron farm waiting for more iron to get farmed up because I had an idea. My idea was to max out a weaponsmith villager with the possibility of getting a sweeping edge sword. Now, we need this iron to trade for levels so the villager could get to the sword trade level. And guess what? The trade was horrid. So I said, I'm gonna enchant one myself. So I went to the nether to try and get to level 30 to go for that nice enchantment. But unfortunately, I got a sword with one of the two bad enchantments and my idea was ruined. Feeling extremely frustrated, I lost it and I went to Cleep to try again the next day. Day 64 started with me remembering to put in a captain bank so I could get the raids without having to fly all the way to that stupid outpost every time. Kind of like with Mrs. Swift whenever she needs to go get water from her fridge. Anyway, with the bank installed, we went to get the bad omen effect again, and this time it happened really fast. So back to the raid farm we go for attempt number two with this scary thing. Also, remember we lost our totem last time we ran this farm, so if the vexes swarmed me, they would probably kill me and delete the world. With that in mind, we started the raid and went straight back to swinging. This time it started out smoothly and I unfortunately took a vex hit pretty early on and noticed it right away and was able to try and fight back, but these little guys are relentless and wouldn't leave me alone. Now this is where I made a massive error in judgment. You remember that bubble elevator from earlier? Well I thought it was still open for me to use as an escape and went into it, but it was blocked off like four blocks up and the vexes were there and they started hitting me hard. I was on three hearts when I paused the game and I had to think. I had to think really hard what to do here. What I eventually ended up doing was mining a hole in the wall to escape and thankfully these vexes never chased me and I was able to survive.
I went back to the farm though to finish what I started and you will never guess what was waiting for me there. Totems! Look at all the totems! In all that confusion we managed to slay some of the evoker guys and my protection to life was back. But the farm was still broken so our goals were not achieved yet. So we fixed the farm and started it back up and this time no vexes attacked me and we did it. We set up the fully automatic raid farm. To celebrate this victory I got a shulker box and filled it with totems to show I was basically unkillable. Man this farm is so good and now we have a good source of gunpowder and and redstone and totems and levels this build was really scary but i'm very happy we got it done well that video was a lot of fun and thank you guys for watching i hope this video was entertaining to you and if you liked it go ahead and like and subscribe or whatever it is that you kids do these days but with that i think that's gonna be it for me so i will see you guys in next week's wednesday upload and yeah i'll see you guys later bye bye